Hi everyone, my name is Fozia and today we will be solving a step-by-step mass-to-mass conversion. Let's begin. First, let's analyze our question and determine any information that can be derived that will be essential for the conversion. The exothermic reaction between liquid hydrazine and liquid hydrogen peroxide is used to fuel rockets. The products of this reaction are nitrogen gas and water. How many grams of nitrogen gas is released when 13.6 times 10 to the second power grams of hydrazine is used up? To begin, let's identify the reactants and the products so we can write out a chemical equation. We know the reactants are hydrazine and hydrogen peroxide because the question verifies a reaction between them. The products are nitrogen gas and water because the question also states they are results of the reaction. So our chemical equation for now is N2H2 plus H2 yields to produce N2 plus H2O. No, I said for now because it might be changed later. Now let's identify the given, what we are starting with, and the unknown, what we are finding. The essential question says that 13.6 times 10 to the second power grams of hydrazine will be used up and we need to determine how many grams of nitrogen gas will be released. Therefore, the given is 13.6 times 10 to the second power grams of hydrazine, and the unknown is question mark grams of nitrogen gas, mass of reactant to mass of product. Now, let's start the mass to mass conversion. It is good to understand that our conversion will consist of converting from mass of reactant to moles of reactant to moles of product and finally to mass of product. Our first step is to balance the given chemical equation if it is not already balanced. We should have the same number of each chemical on both sides of the yield sign to follow the law of conservation of mass. As I write down the chemicals under the yield sign, I see that nitrogen is balanced but hydrogen and oxygen are not. There are four hydrogens on the left side but two on the right, and there are two oxygens on the left side but only one on the right, so the equation is unbalanced. We must add a coefficient to the chemicals on the right side since they are the smaller amount. Adding a 2 in front of H2O will now give me 4 hydrogen and 2 oxygen on the right side of the equation. The new and balanced chemical equation is N2H2 plus H2O2 yields to produce N2 plus 2H2O. The first step is complete. The second step begins with knowing the given and the unknown. To make things easier, we could write them under where they belong in the chemical equation. So 13.6 times 10 to the second power grams of hydrazine would go under N2H2 and the unknown grams of nitrogen gas would go under N2. Continuing the second step, we must now convert the given mass of the reactant to moles, a simple conversion using the molar mass concept. A conversion factor must be used. As we set up for this conversion, we know that grams of N2H2 must go in the denominator since it needs to be canceled out. The one mole of N2H2 will remain in the numerator. We must use the periodic table to determine the mass of N2H2 so we can use it in the denominator. It is 30 grams because 2 nitrogens equals 28 grams and 2 hydrogens equals 2 grams and the sum of those is 30 grams. Now we cancel out the N2H2 gram unit, multiply 13.6 times 10 to the second power by 1 and then divide by 30. Our new amount is 4.5 times 10 to the first power moles of N2H2. The third step is converting the moles of the given reactant to moles of the unknown product. We will use the molar ratio derived from the balanced chemical equation to set up the conversion factors. The molar ratio gives the relationship between substances in the chemical equation. From previous lessons, we know that the coefficients in front of the chemicals also determine how many moles of each chemical is used. So as we analyze the balanced chemical equation, we see that one mole of N2H2 reacts with one mole of H2O2 to produce one mole of N2 and two moles of H2O. Since our molar ratio must include the given reactant and the unknown product, H2O2 and H2O are not relevant. The molar ratio between N2H2 and N2 gives us two possible conversion factors shown here. However, we will be using the second one because the unit in the denominator must be moles of N2H2 since it must be canceled out. Moles of N2 will be in the numerator. Now we do the math again and cancel out moles of N2H2, 
multiply 4.5 times 10 to the first power by 1 and divide by 1. Our new amount is 4.5 times 10 to the first power moles of N2. We're not done yet. The question is for grams, so we need to convert from moles of product to mass of product. Again, we determine the correct conversion factor and use the periodic table to find the mass of N2. That's 2 nitrogen, so it is 28 grams. The 1 mole of N2 will go in the denominator because we want to cancel out that unit, and then 28 grams of N2 will remain in the numerator. Using the math again, we cancel out moles of N2, multiply 4.5 times 10 to the first power by 28, and divide by 1. Our new amount, and no longer the unknown, is 1.26 times 10 to the third grams of N2. We are finished and have answered the question. If 13.6 times 10 to the second power grams of hydrazine is used, then 1.6 times 10 to the third power grams of nitrogen gas will be released. I hope this video helped you learn more about mass to mass conversions. Thank you for watching.